I don't know in the UK at what time is it now, <laughs> but in India and in Tanzania and Zambia is almost afternoon now. So um, it is it is eleven twelve now. Oh, it's a good morning. <laughs> so, uh, dear participants, you are most welcome to our session this afternoon. And we are going to discuss and share our ideas on the topic that the impact of racism on black ethnicity. So, the first thing, we have to follow some rules. Uh, very sure. So we we'll have to follow some rules. Uh, please, when you enter, don't disturb your microphone so that everyone can get the time to understand each other. And also, if you have a question, you can ask through chat box. If you are using laptop, at your right hand side, at your right hand corner, you can see chat box. So you can write your 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 question, your query, or whatever you can write, and we will see there, and we can do it, and we can revise and read it and explain. And also, if you want to talk, you can raise up your hand or sing, there's that option. You can raise up your hand. And... Hello, Dr. Shahid. Yes, yes. It's not so much disturbing. OK, I'm just going on. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Myself is Manfred Manda. I'm from think, Tanzania. Uh, and I'm a student of Bachelor of Farmers final year from Pune University in India. And in today's session, we have eminent speakers from various parts of the of the world. We have Miss Janita Zalon from Zambia. We have Advocate Alphonse Tpiang from Tanzania. We have Dr. M. Shahid Sadiq from India. We have Dr. Chris Cirillo, medical doctor from Tanzania. We have Mr. Maxis Nello, Tabi Forum founder and the CEO from Tanzania. We have Mr. Giovanni Batista from UK. And we have Dr. Sanjay Sawan, sir, he's the principal of my college. I don't know if he has joined us. So these will be our speakers who will be uh, leading us to discussion uh, this afternoon. <coughs> As I have said before, our topic is the impact of racism on black ethnicity. And I have hoped to start this session and this discussion because what is happening now, it may be geared due to the what is happening in the United States, but also I think it's a good time for us to come together and talk about the impact of uh, racism on black ethnicity. And as it can be that Racism can happen to black and to white or to any race. But in this meeting, uh, in this session today, we'll be particularly talk about impact of racism on black ethnicity. And we had so much discussion before joining today, and most of people are giving that why we should discuss the injustice that's happening in the United States. Why should we voice up the injustice that's happening? Uh, somewhere in the United Kingdom, and we are living in Africa. Why should we talk about it? But I can give you um, one example. When I was in a high school in 2012, take an example, maybe it happened, racism in India, maybe some black people uh, got injured, got, got affected due to racism. And I could have stayed quiet and saying that this has happened in India, it's not my concern. And imagine after three years, now I'm in India. So I can face that day. So we should not uh, take this on a granted that because it happens in the United States or in other parts rather than in Africa, we should not talk about it because you never know one day you'll be in the United States. So if you are not talking today, if you're not raising up, you're not voicing up about what is happening wherever in the world in case of injustice, mind you that you never know one day you'll be in that part. And that's the truth. Maybe uh, my brother Giovanni didn't know that one day you'll be in United Kingdom, but today you are there. So imagine if today uh, we are just staying quiet, and that's because it's of George Floyd. It's, it's, not, it's just uh, he's an American. It's not our concern. You never know those things. Maybe there's a day you'll be there. So we have to talk in that sense that when injustice happens everywhere in the world, 
the people have to voice up and we have to talk about it. And this, I think, is the, the what has led me to prepare this session. So, um, as you know, in a society, we have two main types of discrimination. We have religious discrimination, we have gender discrimination, sexual, and we have maybe education, uh, political, that is uh, we see happening now uh, in many areas, political discrimination. But today, we are not going to talk in a broad term. We're just going uh, specifically to talk about um, racism, only this part. So I have to take this opportunity to, uh, to, to welcome all participants who have already joined us and who are still joining us uh, this moment. And for the short time, we can get an opportunity to understand some of the participants uh some of the participants so the first participant we have to understand at least uh their their background and what they're doing now so we have first one is dr shahid uh is a development analyst media strategist and a human rights campaigner based in india with a vast experience as a journalist for one of the most watched television network in india for the last 20 years, he is rigorously working to construct and reshape the belief and the structure of society. His belief lies creating an environment of, of symbiosis. He is always analyzing his strategy and try to develop a perspective over multiple issues from covering racial violence perpetrated by law towards African community living in India, or advocating the human rights on Rohingya refugees migrated from Neymar as well as migrant laborers heavily impacted, impacted by lockdown in India. Through his not-for-profit organization called Association for Community Research and Action, despite being immersed in the traditional structure of media platform, he has made his presence in various social media platforms, ensuring the best use of that platform. He believes that transformation is not a linear activity. What is necessary for transformation is to engage continuously and move towards together transformation with an approach of everyday activism. And this notion of everyday activism in his busy schedule is meant to do with his presence in various social media platforms, with his outstanding capacity to bring together and respond to government, civil society, the private sector, and the other partners in creating opportunities and solutions for sustainable development. He has sincere contributed for various fields such as environment, health, education, innovation, human rights, and sustainable rule of development. And also we have uh, Dr. Christopher Cyril. He is a medical doctor from Tanzania. He is a Tanzanian medical doctor, writer, and human rights activist. Started degree of medicine at Muimili University, Dar es Salaam, Tanzania working with the Ministry of Health and a consultant on HIV AIDS control program. Also of the book, Islah is our Khalifu Nau Salam. I think this is one of the famous books in Tanzania. Islah is our Khalifu Nau Salam. So that was Dr. Christopher Sri. Okay, so we have Janita Zalomi from Zambia. Uh, Miss uh, Janita Zalom. She is a registered nurse, uh, served in the Smalthus International Student Council as a sports coordinator, served in the several association of African students in India as a chief advisor and communicator, served in the Student Nurse Association, SNA, as a treasurer, served as student head representative for Zambia in Pune City. Awards and recognition won the Chancellor's Gold Medal, award for the best ongoing student of the year 2018, given by Sri Ram Noskovi, the President of India, secured an award of appreciation for the outstanding and dedicated service to Columbia Asia Festival at an intern in the year 2018, awarded a 12 and certificate of appreciation for outstanding dedication and commitment to the Association of African Students in India chapter, awarded a certificate of appreciation for dedicated service and special support to all Indian African Adventist Students Association in the branch. And we have 
advocate Alphonse Nachipiango. He is an adaptable and responsible advocate with practical and resourceful knowledge in legal matters. He has clear, logical mind with practical approach to the problem solving and drive to see things to better completion. He attained his LLB funds degree at Nzumbe University in 2014. He also attended law school. He attended law school of Tanzania in 2015 and 16. He enrolled as full-time practicing in 2018. Alphonse is doing litigation and corporate law in general and conducting legal research in both aspects. He is an active member of Tanzania Law Society, TLS, and East Africa Law Society. And we have other speakers. We have uh, Mr. Chiovin uh, from United Kingdom. And we have also uh, Dr. Sawansa. I don't know if he's joined. I cannot find him here. So uh, that was very short introduction to our speaker. And also we have very important and eminent speaker, uh, Maxis Mello. He is a founder uh, of Jami Forum, one of the platforms that give an opportunity for most people to talk and to give their views in this world, especially in Tanzania. So I appreciate uh, his presence here today. Uh, so uh, allow me to start our session. We'll be starting with Mr. Mike Smell from Tanzania. Uh, Mr. Maxis, you get me? Are you there? Yes, I'm around. Yes, uh, Mr. Maxis, uh, tell us what you understand by the term racism. Uh, it's, not, it's not like a definition from my side. Uh, hello, hello, everyone. Sorry, I forgot to say hello to everyone. Uh, I'm not the one who's presenting. <laughs> I'm Maxence Mello, as I've been introduced, and uh, I'm the executive director of an organization. It's a, a civil society organization called Jami Forums, based in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. I'm a civil engineer by profession, but I've received a number of awards globally as a journalist and uh, as a technologist in Africa. And uh, I just last year, I received a global award as a uh, one of the champions of freedom of expression. And when we talk about racism, I've experienced a number of Hello. Yes, yes. I think someone is talking. Should I proceed? Yes, yes. No, no, no. no, no, no sorry, sorry. sorry. Somebody must mute the microphone because it's so much in Thank you. then we don't understand anything. <laughs> yeah. Somebody is, is, okay. is in double session. No, Someone is it's... watching Lisu and someone is with us here. So I can hear the voice of Lisu. You can help both. You should, you should drop one. Okay. Please. Okay. Um, so uh, when it comes to racism, uh, I've experienced racism uh, when I was in many of these countries. I've been in China, I've been in India, I've been in the UK, I've been in the US. I've been in so many places and I've experienced uh, racism. So it's not about the definition, it's about something that I've experienced. And uh, it's, it's here to stay. And uh, I think it's about time that we have to discuss this. And it comes when uh, our colleague uh, or our brother Floyd just uh, died, uh, and it's, it's, I think it's, it was about time that we, we have to speak about it. So, as for me, it's not a definition, it's something that I've experienced. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, to you, uh, Ms. Janita Dolong from Zambia, as you have started in India, maybe one of the parts. She has left. She has left. Yes, uh, one of the parts, maybe in the world, people might think that uh, there is racism. Uh, can you tell us, have you faced racism when you were studying in India? Can you please repeat the question? Have you ever faced racism when you were you. studying in India?
it's clear for you. I think okay, I mean, I'm asking you if you have faced any kind of racism when you were studying in India. Okay, um, thank you very much, House. Uh, as um, Mr. Banda introduced me, I'm Janita and I'm coming from, I come from Zambia. I did my degree in nursing from India and um, I might say that I'm a victim of racism. And you know, studying in India was uh, very much stressful in the sense that you face racism in so many things. You know, like uh, I can give examples. For African students in India, there are some apartments or some flats where you, you can't train because you are black. And apart from that, you know, apart from the COVID-19, even before the COVID-19 thing came in, the Indians already began to practice social distancing on African students. I remember very well. Uh, when you board on a public transport or a public bus, an Indian could rarely sit next to you black. On top of that, um, in the society itself, you as a black or you as a foreigner, when buying commodities or things uh, in the market, they would actually increase the prices for you as a foreigner. And this used to be very bad. And sometimes in colleges, lecturers would actually teach in hindi knowing that you're africans and they don't know how to speak hindi but they would opt for using their language and then so that you cannot understand apart from that we used to face discrimination in terms of um indians looking at africans as the drug dealers and also as prostitutes you know, when you're hosting maybe a party at home or maybe you're playing music at home, your neighbors could actually call the police on you to report you to say there's music, loud music in the house. And when the police comes to your house, they would start asking you to say, do you have any drugs in the house? You know, and also, apart from that, they would even take you to police because of playing simple music in the house. But if it's a fellow Indian, that never used to happen. But it only used to happen to Africans. And because of this, the racism that I used to face, I personally, I felt uh, I never used to feel at home. It's not everyone who used to practice this, but it's some Indians who used to do this. And at some point, you feel like maybe it would have been better if I had studied in my own country or if I'd stayed in my own country than coming here to face this, this kind of racism. I remember at one point I was with my friend in the, at, um, in the middle of nowhere, the landlord asked us to move out of the house. Why are you asking us to move out of the house? They didn't have any reason why they were kicking us out of the house. And then I told my friend, he so said, when I go back to my country, we'll be treating the Indians the same way that they're treating us. But thank God we're good people and then we don't treat them the same way that we do. Apart from India, even here in Zambia, racism, does happen. Do I go on, Mr. Banda? Mr. Manda, okay. you wanted to say Just a little bit now. Yes, we can come back to you later. Uh, Dr. Shahidi Sadiki, uh, as we, I met with you several times and you have dedicated your life to save for, uh, for, for, for Africans who are living in India. Uh, as you are among those people who are from the community that we are claiming has Racist, uh, racist, uh, racism and has got uh, racist aspects. Uh, what has, has, has led you to come in the front line to go against of the majority of your community and now to stand up and talk that, to tell your, your, your society that we have to stop racism? What has led you to be in that talk? See, I tell you because uh, uh, being a journalist, I encountered several stories you know, uh, off and on, that was manufactured. And I understood uh, very early, you know, that what the people are thinking, they are very much, you know, driven by the, uh, either by the media, super, super racist media, or something like, you know, with a hidden agenda to gain something out of it. You know, so these are the things that I understood very early. It was 2009, you know, when I took as a very serious subject to fight 
against my own community in favor of the people those who are coming from african countries for studying for health check up and other things because i was uh, uh, hearing about it but being a part of the media fraternity i was not very much comfortable you know in talking you know double standard sometimes you tell that you know you follow uh, gandhi and you are uh, uh, country where the gandhi also faced there is this kind of situation again you are doing the same thing again it, it's a kind of hypocrisy so i started studying about it and i found there so much resemblance and about the martin luther king and nelson mandela gandhi's ideology lots of things were like resembling if i have to be like to human being you know that you claim to be in a, an indian so india is very much close to africa when you read the history so lots of things like you know they are similar you know and we cannot discriminate on the basis of the color or the race the man i am i belong to the minority community i also face in a different way religiously you know you you must be hearing about the communal uh, hatred and other things but for that also i have to fight for, for myself and again fight for the community who are our guests they are here for some time they are a real messenger for the image building you know they are coming here and they are the revenue generator as well if you can say that you know the country they are coming and investing and they are paying money for your services they are not at free of course and even then you treat in a different way than it's like injustice against any humanity so that that uh, forced me to create that kind of you know activism uh, being into the media so i started doing the media activism racism <coughs> so we uh, campaigned several time like uh, with the uh, tag hashtag uh, do i look different you know among them and several time that when uh, that tanzanian girl that was uh, she was uh, murdered in uh, bangalore and the congo student in uh, delhi so I, I still i remember that tooth incident brutal incident without any cause and all so i was also there on the front line to uh, to you know uh, protest with the african students even now still since 2009 i am still i am still uh, doing the same thing wherever i go in the metropolitan cities i try to bring both the community indian and Uh, this african community to know each other very well because uh, without understanding each other you will not understand their feeling not understand their problems you will not be close to them so that is why that forced me to take up this issue just for the humanitarian ground but i will be continuing this one you know to expose more and more you know ch- challenges as well as to uh, uh, give the positive impression about the african students there are very very good talented people you know from africa that i have met in my life and and they they deserve much more respect than what they are having right now so these are the things that uh, that driven me and i am still hopeful that some some day it will change thank you very much dr shahid for your views and what has led you to participate in anti racism and you can and, and we can see that one of the things that has led him to be in a front line is because of his exposure to god and also the studies and experience he has passed through and to you dr chris is relo are you there can you tell us uh, what is the racism according to you uh racism hello hello yes yes continue there on i'm um, with the head there yes yes uh ask me about the racism I think if there is one definition of racism but uh, if we have so many definitions they all amount to discrimination or denying someone with humanity privilege uh, in different aspects education the health aspect could be economy uh could be reception of goods and so so and now we are seeing the news the response of get hello hello dr srinu please can you hang up a little bit because we're not getting you uh, very well I'll, i'll be coming back to you soon uh to you advocate alphonse nachpian i think are you there uh what is the racism as as per your views in the legal aspect what do we see um racism in a legal aspect as you are an advocate can you please tell us on that i think he's joining now okay i'm not sure if he's there uh, 
David. Okay, while we're waiting, he's joining now. Uh, Mr. Giovanni Battista from United Kingdom. Please tell us, uh, have you ever faced the racism there outside? Sure, I've been around here for the past 20, 24 years. And uh, I've been hovering around in Europe and, and Africa. And, you know, and uh, I did my studies in UK. I'm an accountant in the profession. And uh, uh, my first years in UK, uh, they were very tough, very tough indeed. Um, but there was a time, like Janita said, uh, uh, I remember back in 1987, I was living in an apartment with four uh, renters, and I was one of them. And uh, we were sharing the kitchen in the sitting room, but it's a, a house with four bedroom flat. And one time I was in the kitchen, and the rat, the rat, the rat crossed in the kitchen. Think of a rat. I mean, the UK, the rats in the UK. And this guy uh, from Ireland, all he had to say to me is that we have this one in the house simply because we have this guy from Africa. The rat, the rat in Africa. The, the, the rat was in the UK and they're from Africa. And how, how could I bring a rat me on the back? And this guy, he left the house. He had to move out. And uh, there was also another time I was a student and uh, I was doing these black jobs, uh, like I've been discussing uh, before uh, this session with the uh, uh, I was doing these black jobs that were like the same. And uh, one of the same, he asked me, Do you have these kind of things in Africa? I said, what kind of things? You have like toilets, like this is your toilet. You have electricity in the homes, this and that. I felt so much of it that I was almost here in the night. And then there was also another time that I was in the train, traveling the train. According to the law, according to the judges, I was entitled to to travel to first class train here in Europe. And I had a ticket on Christmas for a year, and it was the entire year that I'm given that, that I have to travel to Christmas. The truth. All of a sudden, the other passengers next to me, the same wagon, was asking me, Oh, uh, oh this is a first class wagon. And I said, It's okay. Say, yeah, say, but you don't look like you're a guy who can drive in first class. Say, I'm entitled to drive in first class. And then they had to wait to the, uh, the conductor of the train to come, inspecting, uh, checking tickets. And they, they gave the tickets very quickly. And uh, when that guy came to me, I had to fake like, I can't find it, look in this pocket, like I can't find it, like here. To just to show them that, probably make them believe that they didn't have a ticket to travel, a proper ticket to, to be in the first class to have train. But later, I took out my ticket that was showing them that I am entitled to drive first class for the entire year. The second question from them after that is, how can you manage to travel first class and your ticket has no limits. Ours has a limit that you get on the train from nine o'clock, but yours is like any time. How, how, can, how, how could you get this? And the, the answer back to them was this. Sorry, you are too late. You should have asked me this question before you start assuming that I am not entitled to come to the first class. Well, this friend. So, uh, at least you can see what I've been facing for many years. But again, I had to adapt and get used to it. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Giovanni sure. Batista. I'll be coming back to you very soon. Uh, I think now, Advocate Alphonse Nachitano, you are there. Okay, Advocate uh, Alphonse, tell us uh, what is racism as as far as legal concerns. 
I think Siri is getting in trouble. Okay, we can, uh, Dr. Sawansa, are you there, please? If you are there, he's not there, I think. This is Professor something, I see Professor, Professor who? No, he's not. Uh, he's Sawansa. Um, Dr. Cyril, are you coming back? I think you are back now. Can you join us and tell us a little bit of the history of racism as as aspects as what you know, what's the history of racism, when the racism started and how how uh, does it start? It? Hello, Dr. Cyril. Hello. Are you getting me now? There is still a problem. Okay, let's go to Mr. Maxis Melo. I think uh, you were there. Uh, you have given us your uh, background that you have faced uh, racism uh, when you were, you were outside Tanzania. And do you agree with the fact that the majority of black people are affected by racism? And if yes, why do you think it is so? As uh, it's not only uh, when I was out of Tanzania, even in Tanzania. And uh, as for me, I think it's not about uh, the blacks. Even Asians are facing racism. So it's not about that. And when I went to uh, Mumbai, where I, I have employees uh, across the world, I have people in South Africa, I have people in the UK, I have people in India, I have people in China who are working for us. So when I was in India, uh, as for me, I thought like it's not, uh, I, I didn't treat it as uh, racism, but I thought like I was being undermined. It says for me, I don't translate stuff the way I want to translate them. So when I told them like I'm looking for these kinds of stuff for my company, everyone was surprised. Like I, I was still young. That was 2009. And when i approached someone from india and i told them like i want to give you uh, this kind of opportunity for work for me uh, it was something that they didn't uh, anticipate and when i was in dubai uh, it's like two years ago no, three years ago it was 2017 i was in the emirates uh, uh, plane and uh, as my colleague uh, George just said, when you get into the first class uh, <laughs> uh, cabin, everyone is surprised, like, you are black, you're still young, where do you get the monies, and such kind of questions. I was interrogated by the authorities to know where I got the monies. And I faced the same in South Africa. I faced the same in um, Sweden, when I was in Sweden. And as for me, I think sometimes it's about the mindset. It's not about the race it's about the mindset even blacks are discriminating each other you can see people from tanzania uh, mainland and the uh, islands <laughs> discrimination is there people from from pemba i mean say uh, do see the people from the mainland like they are the aliens i mean say and you can see this kind of conflict between tanzania and kenya so it's not about the race, like the car lights. It's, it's a mindset, and we need to change this kind of mindset, as for me. Thank you very much, Mr. Melo. And now we're going back to Dr. Shahid. Um, as you are from Indian community, and you have grown in the Indian community, um, actually tell us, uh, what is secret, what the Indian in the normal community think about the black people? Just tell us the truth. What do they think about us? When they see us, when they, maybe when we meet with them, what actually do they think about us, especially black people? So it's a very good question and genuine question, you know, to understand. What is the feeling when they see? So actually, this is, a, uh, this is a part of ignorance, you know. They don't know what Africa it is, what the people uh, are from, you know. Because if you talk to them that you are from Nigeria, you are from Sudan or somewhere, any country, they just know Africa. If they even don't know that, you know, Africa is mixed of uh, uh, 
54 countries it's this thing that it's just africa is the country <laughs> so you can imagine that what kind of you know knowledge they have and another thing that you know they have been you know brainwashed by media people or some uh, you know uh, their uh, other people those who had been the, you know with the prejudiced mind that these kind of look you know when they tell their story to their children they tell the very dangerous man in the shape of uh, with the, the black looking dark looking something you know they create a something image in their mind as you see in the film also if you see in india all the criminals are uh, wearing the skull cap to show that they are muslim you know in that uh, mindset you know when you think and you start gambling and the poor people those who don't know much about africa they don't have education they think and they get scared you know that to see this kind of because they have heard about this kind of thing that you know uh, they they are dangerous they are they think that you know they will attack something so this kind of notion you know that it has uh, this kind of thoughts has been created and manufactured by the uh, super racist people you know those who believe in the uh, you know this uh, so class in the society upper caste lower caste something like that this kind so they create this kind of thing and even in india not about in africa even in india the uh, dark skin people are treated as a lower class you know that uh, uh, serial caste and serial tribes they are also with the dark skin in india itself so they they, they have this kind of prejudice mind they are the uh, basically they are tuning their children with that mindset knowingly or unknowingly that they are creating the racist generation you know on and on so this is coming in a that form now this has become a part of politics so it has become international politics in india it has different kind of racism you know in the casteism racism so this is playing a part and they are gaining both of that this is a part of mobilizing their own community and and, and confronting other community that they are in the minority minority these are the things that you know we have to we have to fight this kind of situation we have to be more vocal we have to be more you know uh, with the information to share with those people those who are at the uh, bottom line you know they don't know that what is what exactly they are preaching and this media actually i blame uh, totally to media because they have manufactured the consent okay and whole over the world they have created uh, this kind of mindset and they have pushed the people to think in that way that they want to see the world so this is thank you about the thing yeah. thank you very much uh, dr shahid for your views and now we go to uh, mr jovan batiste from united kingdom uh, do you agree with the fact that racism is just an illusion and psychological damage for black ethnicity to sense that it doesn't exist? I will be giving you one example. Uh, just get this incident that has happened in the United Kingdom, uh, in the United States. Uh, if it happens, the two incidents at the same time, that white person kneel and kills a white person in the same way the white person has killed a black person. Do you think that uh, that killings uh, of white person against white person could rise up and voice up the way that it has been done in opposite way, whereby the white person has killed a black person? What uh, do uh, do effects um, uh, we have, especially black people? on this sense because these are incidents that happens why when a black kills a black we feel as like it's a justice but we become so vibrant when white kills a black is it anything that is uh, concerned about, uh, about anteriority and psychological drama that black people do, we have i will join mr maxence on this i'll say just one way and uh, uh, this will be called mindset. This is mindset. Sadiq uh, uh, has just told us about something that the media is preaching in India. And the very same thing is being preached around the world, especially in the Western, against black. But again, we in Africa, we are preaching the same thing about white with the opponent to entirely on in Africa. If you go to uh, the Middle East, you see 
the same story that's happened between the, the Israel and the Palestinians. Mindset. We have a problem of mindset. Mr. Maxis said here one thing, and that's very big. Discrimination or racism is something we can say is something is, is, is in bond. So it's, it's only seen or discussed or talked about when it has got out of that person. We had problems in Tanzania, for instance. We know somebody like Mongos was killed in some way. We didn't see anybody in the street. People they were just quiet, but he was killed by police. And with more, more people who are dying and the police in police hands. We have never heard anyone raising their voices. Not even the people who call themselves human rights people in Tanzania. They can write today and tomorrow they're quiet. They are only giving statements. And they finish. And now, to me, I was discussing to Mr. Um, to Sadiq before, he used the word hypocrisy. This is a hypocrite. We are getting to see what is happening in other people's nations, and we don't stick to what's happening into our own homes where we are. Everybody is racist by nature. Everybody. Everybody. But the timing is when do you release this pressure? Uh, look here. I'll give you an example. If I come from Europe today with probably a woman with me, girlfriend or wife, or two white guys with me, I'm landing at the International Airport, JK Nirere Airport. Out of the airport, they probably want to grab a taxi. A taxi driver will come to me and I'll say, I'll be very specific. I'm going probably to Wengo for those who know the distance. And for those who know the distance, they know that the price from the airport to Wengo normally is 50,000. That is almost uh, 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 20 or 15 pounds. But because I'm with those two whites with me, the price will be uh, probably from here to Wengo is going to be 80,000. The price has doubled. How do you call that? What do you call that? That is racism. It's racism. It makes no difference from, uh, from those ones that we've seen depriving the right of me going into a pub, depriving the right of me going into uh, probably uh, somewhere to socialize. And again, somebody talked to me about something. He said about the ignorance. Most of the people with this kind of mindset they ignore it. They got no education. They know nothing about the world. They only know their inside the world. If you travel, if you travel from Delhi to another Indian city and they stay there for two, three, four weeks, when you come back to Delhi, you have a different mindset about things that's happening outside of Delhi. So, for most of the people, even those people who seeing doing killing people, some of them, or others, those who are uttering words like, "Why you can't you go back to Africa? Why did you come here? Why did you do this? Why that? You African, you are Indian, you are this." If you sit down and go back to the background, those are the people who don't travel outside their countries. They are stupid, dumb people. A traveler, a traveler. We will tend to have an open mind. A traveler will learn how to accommodate one another. To accommodate one another. A very good, educated person will always think about others. You have your ego, but you'll be ready to learn. You have your richness, but you'll be ready to see how the poor are living. You'll be taller, you'll be ready to listen to the short, uh, the short persons. You'll be fat. But also the skinny one, they have something to say. Listen. So it is a mindset. This is the mindset is something very bad. Now I think for us to have uh, a better world in India, 
Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Hang up a little bit, please, uh, Mr. Giovanni. You have talked a lot about mindset, but I have a doubt on top of mindset, and my doubt will be going directly to Maxwell Smello. You'll be answering this question. We are talking about mindset and ignorance. Yes, I can agree with you on that sense, but when it comes that the rest of them is happening much more in the countries like United Kingdom, Sweden, United States, where the rate of ignorance is very low compared to African and Asian countries. Uh, what is your comment if we are talking about ignorance and happening in, the, in, the, in those countries whereby we say they are educated countries, enlightened countries, what's ignorance in this sense, according to you? <laughs> okay, um, again, it's a mindset, <laughs> because uh, it's not about this kind of school you go to, it's not about the country you're in. Uh, there's a, a, a good number of ignorant Americans, ignorant Chinese, uh, even ignorant Africans. It's, it's, it's a mindset, it's not about the race you're in. It's, uh, until people are well trained, you know, it starts with the... Uh, the executive, I mean, say the governments, if they happen to have a kind of uh, training that they can help their people to adapt, like you can live with other people of any other race or someone of, 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 of another nationality, not from your country. You know, people do have this kind of, you may have this kind of education that you may have, for example, you have been educated, you have been in India, and our sister uh, from Zambia said that she, when she, she experienced this kind of hate or uh, racism when she was in India, she felt like once she's back to uh, Zambia, she could do the same to the Indians, but she had to change the mindset. So it's still a mindset, it's not about the race. It's not about the kind of education you have, it's a mindset. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. Melo. Um, again, to you, Ms. Mel, if you are given an opportunity today to give the solutions that will eliminate racism, what would you like to suggest? One, it's a, it's a, it's, it, I think it's high time that it should be one of the UN agendas on ending this kind of racism. It's yet uh, among the global goals, but it should be something that we should deal with seriously from 2020 to 2025. I believe if the UN at large takes this as a serious matter, I believe in the next five years, things can change. It's not about me, it's about the UN at large. Thank you uh, very much. Now to you, uh, <coughs> Ms. Jenica from Zambia. Uh, do you have any solution you can suggest to end racism in the world? Uh, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I think personally, uh, racism is affecting uh, each and every race that is a victim of it very much. And uh, the way we can change this racism I think it's by educating each and every person to say there's no one who is inferior. There's no one who is above the other. We are all equal. And we can achieve this by using media and uh, passing information to the people so that the world can know. The world can look at Africans also to be human beings. We also matter. We are just like any other person. There's nothing that's, that's different about us or about white. We are all people. You know, so if we can use media and other um, uh, in other uh, ways or, or channels of communication to communicate to the world, we say that Africans are also human beings, and there is nothing that is so special about white than Africans. I think this can help us a lot in fighting racism. Thank you very much to you, uh, Mr. Giovanni from the United Kingdom. As we have seen, uh, most of that we, we see most of Africans who are black are moving to United Kingdom or to US, maybe to look for maybe better life. And when they reach there, because they don't have jobs, some of them, they go into uh, bad activities. Um, what do you comment on this? Uh, what should we do as Africans to eliminate or to reduce the number of people who are going to uh, those countries 
And when they are there, they don't have job. What they do, maybe the bad things, what can lead to reshape that black people are always uh, violent. What is your comment on that? I have uh, I have several things to say, but again, I should remind you also that I can see Dr. Cyril. I think he's there, and the other lawyer, Alfred, is there. I think he, we should try them again after this. Uh, now, let, let me go, go back to your question. Number one. Uh, Mr. McSense has talked about uh, the UN, but I think uh, we should be we should begin things from home. I think we should have a, uh, we should be talking about uh, equality more often, and the equality can be uh, told more often to our families. You are a man of the family. You are the father of the family. You know what's happening in the world. You are going down. Your children are going up. You should, be, you should be teaching them about the equality, love, equality, and the love. That's number one. Number two, the world economy. Each country should work very hard to uh, to build the economy of their countries, and they should make sure that the economy at least is saving all in those countries, especially in Africa. In Africa, the economy, the good economy is only for few. And this is the major problem. You see the exodus. More people that even try to swim from Africa to Europe, try to swim. How can you swim? What also uh, can be talked about all the time is the world politics. The politics in the world is causing all this. And if we don't talk about this more often and the stress about understanding of one another, honestly, we are not going to make any progress on this. And another problem that we, we are seeing here, we black, we are so much complaining against the white when we are, we are in the countries. But some Sometimes we are wrong. We should we should be told ourselves, told ourselves that we are also wrong sometimes. I've never been to India, I've never been to China. I'm not interested, interested even to go to China. I can go to India, not interested at all to go to China because I have nothing to do in China. For sure. But I'm seeing my fellow Africans come to Europe. And I've seen also the Africans who are born down here, Jamaicans, Surinamis, this and that. They hate the school. They're not, they're not going. If you bring them to school, they go out school. And for those who are at least hated your bit, they don't want to take jobs. And when you ask them why, they tell you, my parents, before my parents, other parents, they came down here, those are the people who built United Kingdom. So they're just sitting down and waiting for the government benefit. And when you are given 900 pounds a month, you pay for the house rent, you traveling, food, clothing, you don't have holidays, you go mad, you end up doing very stupid things. And this is also one example, last one also, that uh, of what happened in the US. Our George Floyd was killed. Everybody said, we are marching. The world has stood up and is marching from every end. But those people marching in the, in the other part of the world, they're not looting. Those blacks in America, they are looting. What kind of history are you writing down? How are you trying to change the situation? He has been killed, you marching. Justice has been done at least, the arrest has been made, charges has been known. Why are you looting? How are you going to change this law tomorrow? Let the white or your children know that Freud was killed. And what did you do? Looting. Another problem. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Giovanni. We have only 20 minutes to complete our session and to give other people uh, the platform to give their views. Now we are going to advocate Alphonse Nachpiano. 
Uh, what are effects of racism on legal aspects? Yeah, thank you, thank you, um, Mr. Manda. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yeah, are the effects of racism uh, in legal perspective? is a hard or we can explain a, a, a lot of terms uh so far as it is well explained by your fellow contributor that the racism is is is, is not is, is not uh it's a self problem yeah? it's the way every person is feeling on something which he or she wants so far as uh, i've been through different laws in different countries their constitutions, every almost each country which are passing through to see uh, what they are laws covering about the uh, ratio, uh, the issues of racism. Um, I, I found that covered the issue. It is legal. It is not, uh, but people still in practicing. Uh, it, it could be in Africa. It, could be in Asia or it could be in any other country. So, so far as the law not allow people to practice racism, but still people doing the same. It is the same as other problems. As, uh, for example, it is the same as uh, theft practices or rape practices. They all not allowed by law, but people are still practicing. So the problem, uh, I can say, is a one self problem. Every person has the problem is the self only. Thank you very much, Advocate Alphonse Taufil Nachpiangu from Tanzania. Now I'm um, coming back to Dr. Shahid. As we have discussed, everyone has given the views, and we are coming to conclude and agree with that each other that the big issue is mindset. So how can we structure this mindset so that we are, it can be a proper medicine to cure racism in the world? How are we going to restructure the community to, to, to structure and to, to make sure that the mindset of racism is eliminated in the sense that some of people are saying in the, in the, in the attitude of someone. And uh, Adhok Nachpiangu has addressed it to us very recently that everyone is selfish. So if we see racism is a part of selfishness that everyone has born with, how are we going to solve this? So, so definitely uh, this is a like, very core part of the life that it, we are living in. And it is completely driven by the marketing world. You know the what the marketing world is that to show what is what it is not. You know to show something else to sell your product. So we are driven by those things. And since many generations, you know this is like uh, to, to create this kind of thing that to uh, to earn you know their own interest. So that is the one. So solution is only that. Let's start with our own. You know, for 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 ourselves, you know that we think that yes, we are a human being. We don't discriminate. We don't talk, uh, we, which is you know, which which is connected to the racism, which gives like you know, uh, this kind of message which hate each other or something like that. So it will begin from the household, you know, yes, from the beginning. Like parents, they start talking about giving, not only about uh, taking ourselves. So giving that feeling of and the habit of givingness that should be uh, integrated at the in the childhood itself. That yes, uh, sharing and caring, giving you know uh, whatever extra you have something. So this kind of in nature you know nowadays even in school you don't find moral science and other teachings that what we had in our childhood. So this kind of teaching it has to come up from the very childhood from the parents from the school teachers. <coughs> So this will only the, the mindset. Otherwise, this is the marketing world. You know, they want very quick success and they want quick profit out of it. And they don't bother about the society, where the society is going to end, you know, at the end, what they are going to suffer. Now we can, we are witness to that. So this is first thing that start from our own. Second thing that create more awareness about 
the the other part of the world Who thank you how they are thank you, how thank you very much thank you thank you very much uh, dr shay i'm coming back to uh, advocate natpyang and after advocate natpyang i'll be coming to uh, make sense mel and um, to make sense mel uh, you be telling me um when we will say that this death or this killing is due to racism uh, before coming to you uh, nello i'm going back to um alphonse natchan um it has happened the incident in united uh, states that white has killed black but it has happened also in tanzania akulina has been killed and also um uh, mwangos in a legal aspects how do you sure that this killings is due to racism mm. is, is it not possible that the black person can kill another black person because of race uh th- thank you thank you as uh, uh, mr I- uh, manfred uh, i think people are they, they do not they, they are not catching it proper when they are addressing the, the issue of racism racism you cannot say the issue for example of mr mwangosi or the issue of aquelina that was not a racial uh, actions yeah anything happened uh, at the time of uh, mr mwangosi it is not it is it is not an event happened due to, uh, I, what, what can i say it's, it's, it is not a racial effect the situation is very different from what we are discussed the racism race as we know that for example people of very different origin for example an asian maybe he could kill an african or an american could kill a asian uh, something like that but issue of wakulin or the issue of mongosi is not a, a ratio if you say that um what uh, according to example hey, you hey, two, yes two different nations but george floyd is an american mm-hmm. has been killed by an american police so um i think it doesn't make sense if we say racism should be uh, between two different countries or uh, citizens those are two citizens from there so when you stop there to uh, make sense mero uh, how do we sure that this killing is due to racism why we don't assume that a uh, george floyd has been killed as normal as it could be happening a white police to kill a white man in the united states how do we know this is a racism sure um i think it's not the first time that someone has been killed in, in the us uh by the police i think as for me until it's proven otherwise i still believe this is still a po- kind of police brutality and not racism but i still believe uh, uh, several white people have been killed in the us by the police and i don't think they did such kinds of killings because they were white or black uh so when uh, for example there was a case in india when uh, a lady was uh, attacked i think it was india if i'm not mistaken and uh, they were attacked because they were black and i think she got killed she was she got killed if not a lady then it's a, it's a, it's a guy 2 years ago so such kinds of killings when someone is being attacked like you're taking our jobs i can take the south african kind of example when the, the south africans were try attacking the foreigners like you're taking our jobs and such stuff i will kind of uh, automatically tell you like this kind of killings it's about racism but when it's something to do with the police as for me i still believe it's police brutality thank you very much uh, mr mel according to you what is happening in the united kingdom i uh, united states i love united kingdom i don't know why uh, it's not racism just is a police brutality uh, there is a mr general no, 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 no. yeah. please get 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 it right it's not like I, 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 it's a conclusion but i believe personally like there is this kind of okay, thing but because okay, it's someone who's black then they, yes okay then uh, i think uh, mr jeno kidas you want to add something here yes 
Hey, Mr. Jen, we don't get you. Okay, hang up a little bit. Okay, let's go now back to uh, to Mr. Uh, Jovan from the United Kingdom. Um, what is your last say on this issue? How do we get rid of racism in the world? Oh, we, number one, it should be uh, the world's politics. Brother. And if, um, and I'm not entirely sure that this will go off because, like I said before, this is a mindset. And a mindset is something you decide before. You decide you. When you decide to show it, to show it, you want to keep it held inside you and you keep it. So getting trust is not something that is gonna it is gonna be like we can make it done hundred percent. We can lessen the problem. And if you have a try to say something about it, which I also agree. And uh, I, I think, I think Mr. Maxine also talked something he said about it. they are here to take our job. But they are also forgetting that uh, when you are in India, you are not there to take their jobs, you are there for studies, and it's not for free. The government is earning the money, and the government, through this man earning, is running the country. They just don't know. That. But also, we have a very uh, big population. I think it's not big. Few people who are so evil, and again, they are. They are I call them. I call them, call them Now, my people, these are the people. They think that you in India or we in UK or somebody in the US, you are useless. That's true. So I, I don't know what's the right way to say that we can eliminate. No, we can lessen this problem. And it's by addressing, but also by uh, strengthening our economy and by uh, having uh, uh, the world's politics understandable to almost everyone. And people that should travel a lot. You can see those people who are committing this kind of problems, they're really traveling. They're, they're sitting down just in the countries. And they're probably just going around Europe or just going around the Americas. But for Dr. Siddiq, he's a traveler, he's a reader, he's meeting a lot of people like you, Mr. Manda, eh? uh, like anybody else here. You are travelers. You have traveled from Tanzania to India. And you have met Mr. Rashid, and Mr. Rashid has brought you to meet more people. So there are more lessons. This way, is bringing the understanding of uh, uh, concept together. We can lessen racism, but we can't eradicate it. We can't because it, well, I'm dying today and somebody's born tomorrow with the same same mentality. Probably I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Oh, guys, sorry, sorry, sorry. I will give you one time, please. I'll make sure with uh, your background because this is viewed by all over the world. So there are some people background that are doing good thing. There are others I have reneged. So make sure you are with your background that you are staying in a good place. So I will be at the Yes. Okay. Yes. I will give one example. Probably, I don't know how this is going to look like. Take the example of Israel and the Palestine. Um, in, in the Middle East, people they have a tendency of having dinner. Somewhere like in seven eight, just like in Tanzania, seven eight. During dinner, those families from Israel they are talking about how bad the Palestinians are. They are killing us. They are poor. They don't go to school. They have nothing to eat. And in the end, they are telling their children, "Please eat well, sleep good, go to school, and from the school go to the army." National service, train, and they defend Israel because one day the Arabs will kill us. And it's happening, the next border is happening the same to the, uh, to the Palestinians. Israelis, they are bad, they are always killing us, they are doing this and doing that. Please eat, be strong, grow up, go kill them. 
after killing them, you're fighting for Israel and for Palestinians, and then you'll be going to help them. Now, this is hate being planted here. How do you educate this and they bring the people together? This is a maestro. That's why you can see the Middle East, they'll never end fighting. It's because of the preachings they're getting every single day. And it's being passed over. So, if we can find a solution to educate the problem between Palestinians and Israel, it's going to be the same answer to racism in the world. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Joami. Now, I'm going to uh, Dr. Shahid uh, with Maxence Man. I'll be giving you the same question and you'll be answering us in different aspects. As you are activists, and whatever you do in the community, you gain a lot of resistance from the government. I have seen several things that happened to uh, Mr. Melo, and most probably it may happen also to Dr. Shahid. Starting with Dr. Shahid, how do you deal with this uh, resistance from the government? And what is your suggestion to the government when you want to stand for the community, but the government suppressing you? So any government cannot suppress, you know, uh, very openly. They will play a trick to disturb you. So what the strategy that what we take, because this is not a wrong thing that we are doing. We are doing the right thing that what government should do. And if they are not doing, that is why we are in the picture. Otherwise, there was no reason to understand. Because if you remember, there was a huge protest when the Congolese student was killed in Delhi, in Vasant Kunj. After that, lots of uh, embassies and the delegates, they made the Sushma Swaraj at that time, uh, foreign minister and all. Everything was like in panic. Everything was like going on day-to-day -day basis, meeting with the police, meeting with the community members and all. But what was happening? What was the result? That was just a eyewash. You know, again, the same situation we are seeing. Actually, this is not the uh, police matter or law and order matter. This is uh, something purely, purely mindset. You know, you have to have to work on the relationship with the very kind-hearted, very, you know, deeply uh, researched way. You know, it, it cannot be just in one day. It will take many, many generations to revive. Even you see, even in after 150 years of that amendment in uh, US, still there, is, there this kind of racism exists. So it's not, a, uh, it's very deeply rooted. So we uh, thinking about the resist. We cannot stop, but we be more louder to get, gain the uh, people's support. That is the strength that we carry on. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shahid. Now I'm going to uh, make sense, Mel, for the same question. As you can see, when you want to rise up for the community, you gain some disturbance from the government. And uh, what do you suggest? Uh, how can we go with this? Because it's not an issue only of racism. And if you can stand also in racism, you can get uh, uh, that oppress from the government. And we can see in the United States now is happening. Uh, the protesters are getting somehow uh, uh, the oppression, even though police are with them. So um, uh, how do you feel this? And what is the solution, especially when you are, you are against government? Police? I don't think we are against the government. We have different views from what the government has, which is our right. So it's the right to freedom of expression, freedom of speech, and the freedom of association. So, you know, as I said before, I think it was via chat, that once the oppressed start demanding their rights, that's when you, the oppressors will give you the rights that you deserve. So it's all about pushing back. We have to push back always. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Maxence Melo from, from Tanzania. Miss um, Janita from Zambia, do you have a conclusive word on the impact of racism on black ethnicity. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, yes, I have uh, concluding words. Um, just as I said earlier, racism is affecting the black people so much. And uh, I think it's time that we should rise up and then we should, uh, we should speak for ourselves and also for the community and also for a generation to come, you know? As it has uh, an effect 
um, an, an, a bad effect, a negative effect on the people who are affected. So this, uh, I mean, this re racism uh, issue, it's leading to a lot of psychological issues in our society. And I think we should rise up and we should speak so that it can come to an end. I'll give you an example of a Zambian who is studying in the Netherlands. Her name is Rachel, and she's always complaining and sending some clips on social media, seeking for justice. She's being discriminated. She's a health worker just like me. Now, she was telling a story that every time when she goes to the hospital to work, she would be discriminated and she would be told to hide in a room so that uh, there's a certain family that doesn't like her. When this family comes at the hospital, they always ask her questions. To why is she in the Netherlands? Why hasn't she gone back to her country? She's not needed in that country and she has to go back to the country. Now, what has this caused is that she's always uh, feeling that she's inferior. She's always crying and seeking for, 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 for justice, voicing out so that at least people can come on board and help fight this racism. And I think this is what we should be doing, fighting racism. Nobody wants to fall a victim of racism. It's uh, something that affects a person, a person psychologically, and it can also lead to depression and also to suicidal thoughts. I've seen of some people who, who were studying with me because of the racism that they were facing. Some of them could even reach a point of trying to drop out of school, going back to their countries, because it was too much for them and they could not bear it. So as us, the, the youth of today, let us try by all means to fight this racism and to put an end to racism. If we do not voice out today, nobody else is going to speak on our behalf. It's us to speak and it's us to change the face of the world. It's us to speak out and fight and bring this racism to an end. I think those are my words. Thanks uh, so much, Ms. Janita Zalom from, from Zambia. Uh, one among those who have been affected by racism when she was studying. Um, Dr. Cyril, can you get us now, please? Still is getting trouble. Okay, I think um, we'll be getting the time for a word of conclusion to every chance, Mr. Manfred. Yes, yes. Although I'm not a part of your team speaker, but can you can maybe contribute my opinion you concerning are, this? Exactly, you are going to get an opportunity, and that's where I was going to. So um, what I, I'm just giving what is going on now and what we should do because we have only 10 to 20 minutes to, uh, to complete our session. So um, the eminent speakers will be getting the opportunity to give their conclusion as what Ms. Janita has done. But now we are giving the chance to the audience and for them also to give their views. So I think, can you raise up your voice, the one I was speaking with just recently, and give us your Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir, for giving this opportunity. So I want to talk about this uh, perception of racism. What I can talk about this uh, in Africa, you know, sometimes we can call it uh, racism because of perception. You know, when you don't, when you are powerless, you always feel like you are undermined. And due to this powerless, it's, uh, it's always why most of African countries, they are saying that, oh, we are always uh, undermined by white. But if you take it, we take into consideration, uh, for example, all these cases that are happening in the U.S. are always happening in Africa, particularly in Tanzania. We are seeing this uh, even in government. We have been seen in the political party. We, the leading party used to say that if you don't, if you don't select this party, you are not going to get this help. You want to be undermined. You are not, not giving this opportunity. So. What you are supposed to do as African, we have to, we must have self confidence. We must be, we, have, we must be, you, you must unite and we must have a confidence on what we are doing. Because if you don't value yourself, how could you, how could you wait someone to value for you? you see? So 
All these are done because of African, how ourselves we are controlling them. Because if you talk about like the killing of Mangosi and the other people like Yakulina, those are the cases that have been done by police. You see, but we didn't call it racism. Why? Because they, they, they are the African themselves, uh, for us, African, they are black. We used to go to you uh, to white to buy them the high weapon. For, and, uh, for those weapons, uh, strict weapon, very heavy weapons, we are going to buy to US, to China, to to, to kill whom? In the in those white in Africa, where are we buying those weapons to Africa? Who are we going to kill? We want to kill ourselves. So that is not about the system. We African, we have to be stable. We have to be strict. We have to, we have to, to have our self-confidence on what we're doing with. Okay. Although there are some, we can, we cannot say there's no racism. Racism is there even for our own, but we have to stick. If you like this, don't do this to someone. Whatever is you are, same color, whatever to them, you have to be strict because you cannot say that I need a right while you're not doing the right for your for your fellow. Yeah? We have been experiencing this in, in our country, in Africa, in Tanzania. Most of people are killing, are being killed in Kenya, in whatever, everywhere. everywhere. They are, these killings are there, but we don't call it racism. Why do you call it racism? We African, we must be we are much unite together and be the same so that whenever we come this if this white could see us we are we are treated on this they could obey us but they undermine us because the, that's why uh, i used to say to see uh, the president of uh, Ra russia you to say this africa africans are grave you have the place where you can die and, and be grave you see so then they say they used to say that we cannot manage our own that's why even you see the president in Africa, whenever he uh, steal money, he used to take money to US, to U UK, to, the, to why do you steal your money to you to those countries that you used to call white? And you call us. We are giving them our money, we are stealing our money to, from Africa today, and then we are calling it racism. This is not racism. The issue we African, we have to change our mindset, please. We ask, especially we uh, young people, young like you, Manda, we are, we are always young people. So we have to change our mindset. Let us like our, our continent. Let us build our continent, our countries as we like. You see, don't you, don't strike. Whenever you get the opportunity, you run, you take, you steal money to those, your presence. When you get the opportunity, you buy weapon from there to kill your, your opponent. It, because it has been experienced in most of even those president, even the president of most African countries, whenever you criticize him, you are killed. Why don't we? Why don't we like to be criticized? Why you want to kill someone who used to criticize you? So we, I think we must we must be clear and we must be confident whenever if you have a power. If you have an opportunity, please, you have to do better for your Africa, for your continent, so that if those white people, they could observe that these people is very strict, they could obey you. They can't do that because they misvalue us because even, even we cannot manage our country. We cannot manage only our own. We are there waiting for this. As can, I can take an opportunity, an example for this COVID. All, can, all African countries are sitting to, uh, they are so quiet, they are waiting a vaccine to be, uh, to be tested, to be uh, found by the white people who are calling racism, who you, we are pretending to say that they are, they are racism for us. You see, why don't we fight? Why don't you? Because if you see that, if you go deep, you will find those people who are very productive in those white countries. They are black, but we don't utilize them. We used to try them. I can give an example. There is a doctor from Tanzania. Uh, they, they, they are, they are, of course, they call, uh, they call Mwele. They call Mwele. They are, in those countries, they are showing that it's very potential. But we don't value. We don't value our, our doctors. We don't value their, those potential people. You see? So 
in Africa, there is a problem. So for us in Africa, let us not blame white. We have to be stable. We have opportunity to do this. We can go there and uh, adapt their technology and for purpose of improving our continent. But if we keep complaining of white on white, we'll be there and they will be using this. So let us change our minds. And first of all, so I can see all of you are young. So let us change our continent, please. Whenever we go back to our country, let us work just intention. Not don't target and don't say maybe this is my uh, this is my opponent. Let me kill him. No, the the someone who is a potential, take him, call him. I can see your potential. Let, how can we do so that we can get up from this stage to this? How can we go higher? How can we go higher? You see, so for this, we can, even this white, do we? They will respect us. Otherwise, if you are going to kill ourselves, you can go like a shabab. They are killing. They are killing themselves. African. You can go all this. We are killing ourselves. We are going to buy weapon to kill ourselves. Why don't we complain about this? Why are we doing this? We are poor country. We are not dealing with. How can we move from poor country to higher like this? We are always there. Finding a scholarship, finding a sponsor, finding, why don't we sponsor them? Why you are there for them? But if you see the, 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 the natural resources and all in Africa, all natural resources and in Africa, but we are taking them, we are stealing to, the, to, to these countries. So we, we young, we young generation, we need to come up and we have to be uh, smart enough so that we can develop our country's peace. Whenever you get a chance, whenever you get the opportunity, please work for the country, not work for your own. Don't work for to steal money for your pocket. Work for the country. They will, uh, the country will remember you. That was my contribution. Thank you, sir. Thanks very much for your great, uh, great contribution to our session. And this contribution has made me to rethink. And I would like also to ask this question, to address my question to uh, make sense, Mel, before I allow other people to uh, to give their views. Um, we had this conversation, this speech, I call them nice speech. We had a very beautiful speech from the time of Mori Mirere, Kwame Nkrumah, Nelson Mandela. And now we have the same good speech which maybe have only changed some little bit words, but they sound the same sense. We have also Professor Lumumba, he's just talking about the same thing. How are we going to make Africa great, great? But, make sense, Melo. Uh, what do you think, where do we fail? Um, sorry, I don't support what Professor Lumumba does, so I'm not his fan, so I may not talk about Professor Lumumba, but I think we need Africa as one. And, uh, uh, when, wherever you are, for someone who is like Dr. Jo, uh, George, who is in the UK, whether you're in the in India, you are in the US, wherever you are, you should preach positive stuff about Africa. You should always remember that you are from Africa, whether you have invested in those countries, whether you are done whatever in those countries wherever you are you should always think about africa so we need africa is one we need to respect each other you know we have this kind of boundaries uh, we, have, we have our sister from zambia she's from zambia but I, I think she looks like tanzanian so we are all one it's just a, ma a matter of just boundaries but we are one africa should be considered as one country even though we have this kind of boundaries we should once you feel like there is any kind of injustice in any neighboring country. For example, there is injustice in Zambia, there is injustice in Malawi. We should also think that injustice anywhere is injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. So as for me, it's thinking about Africa as one and uh, treating each other as brothers and sisters. Okay, thank you uh, very much. Now I'll be welcoming the audience. If you want to participate, you can write your name in our chat box and I'm giving some instructions there so that uh, you can be given the chance to give your views. Uh, this, this. this Hamim, the guy called Hamim, is raising his hands all the time. Hamim. Sorry? This guy, Hamim, Hamim Lukonga. Okay, Hamim Lukonga, where are you? Can you please unmute yourself and give us your views? Uh, hello, everyone. My name yeah. is Hamim Lukonga. 
I'm um, currently studying uh, optometry in India. So, first of all, I would like to share my view on the point of, like what Mr. George said, racism is all about mindset. It's all about our mindset. Uh, Mr. Regina Babu, uh, he was here uh, saying that uh, we African, we should, uh, like uh, what is happening right now, what happened in Tanzania, Rafaelina. I think we should not uh, mix our police brutality with racism. We should first understand what it's all about, racism is all about. Racism is all about prejudging someone because for what he is, for what is not where he is doing, not for what he is doing, for what he is. I think we should, first of all, uh, it's our mindset that we should not know what is racism. Hello, I mean, I mean, are you done? Oh, there's an uh, internet problem. Okay, there's one uh, participant, Prikus Smoya, I think uh, you are invited, and Prikus Smoya is one of my classmates in high school. So you are most welcome, and thank you for supporting me and joining us in this discussion. Panel is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Manfred. Hope you hear me. Yes, yes. Yes, this has been a very interesting discussion and I'm very happy to be here. But also I also would like you to share my views as you are one of my classmates. For me, I think dealing with racism, in some ways racism is just an outcome of some of the problems in our societies. And if we want to address racism, I think first we have to deal with the of the racism. So if we are just dealing with the outcome, we'll spend a lot of the time. First of all, I think we need to emphasize our people understanding the common value of the people. That is the global agenda, that all the people in every country have the same value before everyone. You can see here in Tanzania, you cannot even eat some of the kind of food before some of the religion persons. Maybe you are a Christian, you cannot eat pork before Muslim, and Muslim feel if you eat pork before him or before her. And if you remember, even when we was in high school, there was some of the issues between Muslims and Christians. Even in the group discussion, you find some of the people, because they are Muslims, they assemble together to discuss about the subject and they don't engage someone because he's Christian. So you think he is a virus to enter that discussion. So from my view, I think racism is very high in Africa compared in Europe. And to deal with this problem, first we should put a number in our community, especially in Tanzania, in Africa. Because they must understand that everyone is equal before anyone. And this thing should be taught in class, should be one of the, uh, the classes subjects that people have to learn and understand. Because now we are studying, we are at school, and maybe we'll join the international organization to work for the various countries, in different places. So everyone must have his own culture, as you also know that culture is the total way of living. Everyone has his own kind of life of lifestyle, how, how he or she lives. Just like wearing a clothes, one could wear the clothes that he demands to wear. So when we come up as the people, as human beings, we must have the common agenda, the value of the people, that we are all equal before everyone. People must understand this. And coming back to the government, one of the advocates in Matiango, if I'm not mistaken of her name, yes. said that the uh, we have mis be misinterpreted the killing of uh, Mwangosi versus racism. For me, I think it's racism. Why do I call it racism? Because killing Mwangosi is just an outcome of the sum of the problem in the country. Why would we say even killing of Apolina is racism? Because racism may also be facilitated with the economic value. That because uh, maybe Apolina is coming from the poor family, no one can stand up, no one can come up uh, uh, demanding for our rights. This is racism. Let's take, for instance, if Apolina was coming from the high class family, from the law of family, the case could not be handled as it has been happening in our country. That is racism. Mongoose was killed. So we are demanding the government because they are the one to address the challenges, the problem that we face in our country. So governments should be there, making sure that the people understand the differences of tribes, differences of religions, and everything. So I think we 
it should be eliminate this uh, conformities, making sure that everything is learning all the way. Otherwise, yeah, I thank you very much, Mr. Manfred, for welcoming this valuable discussion. And I think this is a change that we address it towards racism in country and the world. But uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Prishkus Kasmi Mwaya from Tanzania. And now I'll be welcoming uh, Catherine and Nelson. Uh, at that time, uh, Gino Kidas, you have to be prepared. Catherine Nelson, you are most welcome, and she is also my classmate. This is a lucky day to me. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, exactly. Yes, so first of all, first of all, um, hello everyone and thank you, Manda, for creating such debates. Um, my opinion, first of all, we were discussing about the impact of racism on, on the black community or the black black people, but I I don't know. I don't know for others, but to me, I feel like we've been discussing a lot of about, about discrimination. You know, I believe that racism is 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 part is a part of um is a part of uh, um um what can I say? It's 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 a part of discrimination that deals with the type of race that a person is. That and and there are a lot of ways that a person can be discriminated by not just not just racism so I, I don't i don't believe that talking talking about since we we wanted to focus on racism i don't i don't believe like talking about discrimination and yes people are discriminated even 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 in tanzania people are being discriminated daily because of tribes because of um money it's 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 a matter of class it's it's a matter of how someone views someone else not because of what they can contribute or what they say or what they think or what they feel it's just because they have some form of prejudice or they have some form of um biases and uh preconceived notion about certain kind of group and that is discrimination generally but when you're talking about racism it means that you are discriminating someone for the solely reason that they are of a certain race because you have pre preconceived notion about that race example um a lot of people may be saying that uh black people are bad or black people are against us those are stereotypes that are out there in the world that when you see a black person you assume automatically that they the, they're against us or they are loud or they um um they are violent and stuff like that so um that that is something i wanted to clear up and another thing is um when when you speak of racism i don't believe that the degree of racism that we experience in africa is the same as other countries that have uh that, that the, the majority of, of that country's citizens are white or are other i mean when 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 we speak of racism in africa it's, it's not so much of racism as in discrimination generally because in Africa, the majority of Africans are blacks, um, and and, and the, w when you discriminate against each other, it's, it's not so much of um, I'm discriminating you because you're black because that that doesn't make sense. It's it's but when when you when you look at countries like um, America or where there's a major like blacks or other minorities groups or races are considered minorities we see race is prevalent and and it's it's not a a, a far it's, it's not a matter of a, of debating whether it's real or it's not it it, it it's something that that is real we we may not understand it we may not feel it the way they do and i think that that is the the a big issue because we we will try to speak of how we understand it of or how we've experienced it or how we will be dealing with it but it's not the same thing because i, I live in tanzania and the, the 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 thing that i'll be i'll be experiencing won't, won't be so much racism as in other form of discrimination whether based on class whether based on tribes or the basic so um racism like any other discrimination is is just a hate crime it's it's, it's something it's something that 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 people have just because they hate something not because of and and um it's it's wrong i believe that it's wrong to say to 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 say things like um it we experience racism because 
because we, we we feel we're inferior or we experience racism because we feel that we deserve uh we deserve something else uh, i don't know i think it's wrong to say that because um the system itself the system itself oppressed oppressed the minorities and that is something that is not debatable that is something that is there um we we the the blacks won't get the same opportunities as uh, as other minorities get uh, or even white people i mean that is something that the system itself the system itself is built around so like racism exists and it's not even because that or because africans will feel we're inferior or because africa uh, um all this all these arguments that we bring that is we feel inferior or we, we see as white as we see them as superior to us so we don't value the things as africans have have all oh, those arguments i don't think those arguments should are right to be brought in in a sense of um of to to prove that racism is a whole, because if if you say something like that then you what you're actually saying is racism is our fault and why well it's not that is it's not something and, and you can't and and you can't fight against something that ha, that has been instilled from you since you are born i mean if you are born in in um in a society where maybe walking walking with hands is considered normal if you walk with if you walk with feet you'll be considered a a, a maverick you know so it, to them to them I can't claim to know. I, I, I every day I keep educating myself on these issues of racism and in and systematic racism. But we we see it's 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 something that has its roots in so many things. It's 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 a very complex issue that it to be wrong to just simplify it to, to some catchphrases like Black Lives Matter and and it's it's um I don't know <laughs> like. It's it's not say when you say like black black lives matter. It doesn't mean that other lives doesn't matter. It just means that at this moment, at this particular moment, at this particular moment, like it it does not it does not imply that other lives doesn't matter. It it just means at this particular moment, this minority group are the ones that are faced with uh are faced with all these issues that others don't and and i i think it would it would have been um better if in 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 terms of solution in terms of seeking of solution i i think it it is better now when you're talking about now how can we how can we abolish slay, uh, i mean uh, how can we abol abolish um racism now if you bring points like uh, we should educate ourselves or we should tell ourselves that we we, we are not inferior this these measures are sh should be taken in terms of um that in in like measures to uh to remove racism not as a way of saying that racism doesn't exist or it, it exists because we are inferior which which is not true i mean the uh, the, the uh, miss catherine i hope you are still a miss okay i'll, yeah. hang up, I'll come back to you thank you very much for mm -hmm. your participation and we have, I think, okay, we have very few minutes to uh, complete our lovely session because uh, we have to get a rest. And I have seen Mr. Jeno here. You can uh, get a panel and give us your views. Well, uh, please uh, wait a moment. If you want to contribute something, please write your name here and I'll mention you, then you can participate. Please, uh, you can write your name here. So, uh, Mr. Jeno Kidas, you are most welcome. Jeno Kidas also is my brother. Uh, we are all in India, I think. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Manda and the uh, panelists. I think you can hear me now, right? Yes, exactly. All right. Uh, I accept and I agree with most of the contributions made by these wonderful members in this panel. However, I beg to have my own views on, on some of the issues. Uh, there was a question of uh, racism being compared with the police brutality i think that my sister Catherine has just explained it very clearly we should not be confusing the police brutality with racism because you cannot take for instance the action that the police has killed uh, an, an, an armed citizen as racism and, and that's why in my previous talk with you man i remember i told you what if 
Floyd wasn't a black man. We will have Americans rose to the anger that they have rose risen right now? Possibly not. So what happens is racism is there in most parts of the world, but it shouldn't be confused with other forms of discrimination, as my uh, sister Catherine has said. However, uh, on, on the question of ignorance, I think this much applies in, in India, for instance. I've been here for almost two years now, and uh, in the place I'm living, I haven't faced any, any indications of racism. However, as, Prof, uh, as Dr. Siddiq was saying, I think there is a sense of ignorance. Most of the Indians, I think, they don't study African history. So they just consider Africa as a single country. And mostly they know in South Africa, maybe because Mandela was there in his youth. But what we, I, I need to say is, uh, what do you do when you face a racial discrimination in any place where you are? I would have asked my sister Soloni, what did she do when she faced those kind of discrimination in India? I don't know how do you react to that. But if you keep quiet and you have been racially segregated, then you are not fighting it. I do not support also the, these uh, catchphrases that are being used currently, for example, Black Lives Matter. I consider that as a way of combating a crime with a crime. You cannot solve a problem by imposing another problem. These phrases, these statements we make, the speeches we say, shall be referred to by the coming generations. So when they'll be reading history and they'll be seeing like Black Lives Matter, not all will think that this was only a catchy phrase to express the grievances of the black men across the world. But the white men also will be thinking, so now these black people want to revenge us, you know? There is a kind of reaction, action, reaction process in everything that is done. So I would okay, suggest, please, uh, Brother Jen, can you hang up a little bit, please? I'm um, giving at least one and a half minute. Just try to explain my views in a very short moment because uh, we are going to end. I will come back to you, Mr. Jen, if you want more something to contribute. Uh, we have Dr. Uh, Kushit Alam from London. Uh, please, can you give us your views? Hello, Dr. Alam. Okay, we'll be coming back to you uh, after some times. And uh, now uh, I think Modest Musa from Tanzania, he's also one of my classmates, he has something to contribute while Dr. Alam, you prepare yourself for connection. Uh, Modest Musa, you're most welcome to our discussion. Just use one minute and a half, a uh, one, one and a half minute. Hello, Moses. I think he's getting trouble in joining us. Uh, Dr. Alam, are you there still? Dr. Alam, unmute yourself so that we can hear. Oh. And Moses Musa also can be trying. So, uh, Mrs. Melo, are you there still? Because you are about to go to attend another meeting. Can I give you give us your views in one minute if you are still there? Melo, Mr. Melo, are you there? Okay, I think he has gone. He has got another meeting in the very moment. So all these two people are getting trouble in joining us, uh, Dr. Alam and Mothers Musa. I don't know what's the problem with them. Okay. Can I? Uh, Mr. Jeno, are you Mr. Jeno? Yes, okay. I'm who, is, who is asking me a question? Can I? Okay, proceed. There's someone who asked me 
Can I? Can I? I don't know. No, no, that was me. That was me. So uh, probably I'll be the last one. It's okay. Uh, no problem. You're an eminent speaker. But okay. I just want to, 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 to conclude my remark, Mr. Manda. Yes, yes, yes. Just come and conclude in one minute. Very All precise. Right. Um, I think that we should also understand the forms of racism. We should not only see uh, racism in forms of physical, like what happened in USA, but we should also understand other forms. For example, we have racism in language use. We have racism in other forms, as I said, in classrooms, in domestic places, racism in transport means and everywhere. So when we are trying to voice up these things, we need to also consider all this in mind. Thank you. Okay, now I think uh, Dr. Alam, are you there? He should, he should unmute his mic. He is not, I think that he is not able to unmute his mic. Okay, now it's a big issue. <laughs> so, seriously, it's a big issue. And Moses Musa, are you still there with us? Hmm. Big ish to Moses as well. <laughs> Please, guys, uh, unmute yourself so that we can hear you. Yes, Moses. Hello. Yes, yes. Hello. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. exactly. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, just to, to, to wind up, this is a challenge. I can say this is a, a challenge. Uh, simply, we have been discussing this issue of racism to Africans, Africans, but I think it, there is a root problem of this, a cost budget of this uh, problem we're having. I think we have been claiming about um, being discriminated or being uh, racially abused. But let me give you one, one scenario, which I had last year. You know, professionally, I'm having a bachelor degree of tourism. So last year, I was having this group of tourists. Unfortunately, they were white. They were from Germany. Then we were passing by a certain village in my country, Tanzania. So the kids and the other people who were originally black, as I am, or as we are, they started gazing and pointing fingers to those people, saying, Mzungu, Mzungu, look at those Wazungu, Wazungu. For those not coming from Tanzania, when you speak of Wazungu, it's those people uh, having different color from ours, the black color. So one of those tourists got curious. You know, he says, and be ready. And he asked me, why do they call us Wazungu? You see, assume if you come to a country and we start pointing fingers at you and start saying like, black 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 or any other technology which um indicates a sign of you having a different color from us how would you feel now you see then i was gutted. i was left dumbfounded so for me uh generally speaking i think sometimes we may see it as a problem because something has been done to us but we as africans sometimes or in other ways or another we contribute somehow to this racial abuse because for them they perceive the them the zungu is a racial abuse so this is a challenge to us thank you my brother thank you reverend Good afternoon. Thank, you. thank you very much mr moses musa from tanzania i think now dr alan is is okay he can join us we cannot hear you Yes. Steer your mic is problem. We cannot hear you. We are missing you. Oh, we are missing very good contribution from uh, Dr. Alan from London. Uh, maybe there's a problem of connection. Okay, so I think when I look at uh, chat box, uh, no one is ready to, to to contribute. So I would like now to take an uh, opportunity to to welcome our 
our eminent speakers to give their views and the conclusion in one minute because we are about to close our session. So uh, starting with uh, Janita, you have already given us your contribution and your conclusion. And if you want to give us again, you can text me here. I'll give the opportunity. Uh, Dr. Chris Rillo, are you there? We missed you today. He is not there. Oh, he's getting trouble to connect with us. Okay, Advocate Alphonse Telfi Nachipiang, I think you were there. Uh, what is your conclusion on the impact of racism on a black ethnicity? Hello, Miss Alphonse, are you there? Do you get me? I cannot hear you. Anybody else hears him, please? Maybe it's my problem here. No, no, no. Dr. no, no. Okay, we're not getting, okay. We're, we'll be coming back to you, just uh, just set up your you are, you are, you are, you are Mike, probably. Now we're coming to, I think Dr. Sridhar is not with us. Um, Mr. Giovanni Battista from the United Kingdom. Uh, in one minute, conclusion. Okay. One minute is not enough, uh, probably. <laughs> Too many people, because, it's not enough because I, uh, this young lady, Catherine, has brought up something so, so serious. And yes. I think we should, we should address this. Catherine came to help the panel that we are making a mistake. We did it, uh, uh, two words together. There's a different racism and discrimination. Race, race is, 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 is creating racism. Race, I, black, Rashid, India. Rest. Discrimination is a problem now. So we should not be talking about racism now. Discrimination. What happened to uh to, to Floyd and the other guy in, in, in US? That was number one police brutality, but number two is discrimination. So uh how do we get rid of this? We, we said already this is something important, uh like race. Is something somebody is born with, and is a cancer in your heart, and it's only been seen when it's gonna go out. But before that, it should be okay. Now, how do we accommodate this? Uh, what, what I'm thinking is that we should we should accept our cultural differences because this is also uh, uh, something that's so major, so serious. Our cultural culture is causing a lot of problems. We don't understand. The Indian culture and the and 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 the, and the Indian culture and understand our culture, but also in Tanzania, I am from a certain part of Tanzania. Man is from a certain part of Tanzania. They have different cultures. Mm -hmm. So if we don't accommodate this, we will crash. We will crash. And the, uh, 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 something. I will say again is something to be my final remark on this is that we should very much be fighting for the equality economy to be stable to most of the people and then we should be we should have the political the world political willingness to combat it and address the problem of first race problem Number two, discrimination in those countries. But number three, we should be learning how to accommodate one another. The cultural differences is causing so much trouble. Also, not only for Americans, not only for white, but also for Tanzanians. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Mr. Jovan. I think now Dr. Alam can join us. Can you join us, please, Dr. Alam? He has the problem with Mike. I think that he's not able to unmute. Okay. okay so, okay. Uh, advocates, uh, Alphonse, you have something to say for conclusion. 
Still, we are not getting you. Still, there's a problem with your mic. Okay, um, Mr. Melo has left for some time because he has another meeting. I think um, Miss Janita Salon from Zambia, do you have something to conclude for this moment? Just one minute. Uh, okay, I think most of the things I had already said it before, and uh, I believe that nobody's born racist. We all find it, we learn it. So instead of us uh, teaching our generation, uh, the uh, upcoming generation to be racist, we should teach them to, uh, we should teach them about racial equality so that in the next generation, we will not be recording any cases of racism. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, Dr. Alam, can you join us still? He is still facing a problem. Okay, um, Dr. Shahidi, uh, last read. Can you please uh, give us your views and the conclusion on this yes, topic? Yes, so uh, it's like whatever we have discussed, what we are witnessing, it's like honest to us, this new generation, the youth, youth across the world have to understand this, uh, uh, this kind of madness is going all around, irrespective of their country, religion, caste and ethnicity. We all the youths have to come on platform and we have the responsibility to take to the very, you know, in a positive way to the next generation. Otherwise, our next gen generation will not forgive us. So it is uh, the, whether you fight with the digital technology, whether you fight on the ground, whether you fight in the form of activism, but we have to contribute to fight against this kind of madness that which has been created in, in, since decades and centuries. So, so we have to be ready and we are together. So uh, I am very much hopeful that this is going to happen. Uh, this was the limit, you know, that we have seen that it has crossed the limit that we are witnessing. But we could be formed together to fight it back, to, to counter and to take the uh, world in a positive, a positive way. Thank you. Mr. Thank Marcus, you. Uh, there's also Professor, Professor Nzobi, I don't know, Nzobi. I think yes, sir, Professor. Yeah, I, I yeah, Maria, saw him. She could tell us something. She could tell us something, Maria. Most of professors are so quiet. I don't know why. Mr. Professor. Maria. Is Maria? Yes, Professor Maria Nzomo. Are you there? This, I think, is a missus. I think she's getting tough to join us. So um, I'll be. Let's go in. Yes. Okay. Now I think it's okay. So I'll be concluding because our time is no longer with us. Uh, the one mic is making noise. Please uh, unmute yourself for some times. Okay, so I would take this opportunity to thank all of you uh, participants. I'm very happy and I'm so glad to be with you today uh, from afternoon up to this evening here in India. And it is a wonderful moment to have such a great session that I'm hearing this uh, evening. It wasn't easy when I wanted to start this uh, session when I was just an idea, I came with some people to fetch some views. And my brother, uh, Jovin from United Kingdom has helped me a lot to get some connection, to get some people. And also uh, Dr. Shahid, even the platform that we're using is uh, due to his um, uh, contribution. Uh, easily, I can say uh, Dr. Shahid is eager working to fight for the rights of Africans here in India. And as I'm one of the leaders of the Association of uh, African Students in India, uh, I met with uh, Dr. Shadi several times in addressing our rights and standing for us. Um, despite having uh, men of Indians uh, looking at us in a different way that Dr. Shahid is looking. So uh, he has helped us and he is still helping us a lot uh, through his organization, Association of Social Media Profession, 
So um, I would like to take this opportunity to thank him uh, for helping this thing to be done. And all of you uh, participants, especially my classmates, is so happy to see you because when I'm trying to address this issue to the people, they're saying these things are for elders, it's not for youth. They think you cannot discuss these social matters who are used and you cannot talk these things because when you talk, you'll be against government, you'll be suffered. People are loving you. They're using these words that we cannot discuss because of fear of the government. But I see uh, how uh, my friends, my classmates can contribute and say uh, whatever they think about these issues. So what is my request is that this is not an end. This is just a starting. We're just planning uh, so many sessions uh, days to come. So please, I wish to participate and I thank you for giving me uh, more than two hours and to contribute and a lot of things that we have contributed here. So I think Dr. Shahid, you have recorded all our session and the participants yes. who want to yes. record, I think you will get it. Yeah, I have yeah, I have shared one link also. Two, three questions are there. So yes. if you can contribute so we can develop and publish one report and share yes. with you. That it will be like more, uh, we can reach to many, many people with our ideas, with the solution, with the different mindset and perspective. So that will be great if you can share and contribute your answer and perspective through that link. Okay, thank you very much. I think it's a time now uh, to say bye bye. I love you, who are Tanzanians. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry Amanda. Amanda, yes, yes, sorry. Yes, yes. Before before you leave, I tried to open the link that uh, Dr. Shahidi sent for the questionnaire, but yes. it doesn't like it doesn't open it he says i have to have permission for for the from the one who created the link so i don't yeah we clear it we clear it no problem then we send it to our, yeah we, we can also email you if you leave your email to with manda then we can email that with the permission oh, oh okay thank okay. you then i'll, I'll give i'll give alam manda is there. Probably is right now alam okay I can see Alam striking so hard. Is his radio? Uh... Hey, Dr. Alam, he's missing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so sorry. He still you can't hear. No, he can't, can't be heard now. Okay, my brothers and sisters, I think I would like to say to you bye bye, and I miss you all. Thank you for your presence. Thank you so much.